Hey, welcome back again. Today we're going to recap fantasy-based film Inkheart, which was released back in 2008. The film is based on the novel of the same name. So before we get into it, let's make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit the like button and save us by the bell. Hit the notification bell and here's a spoiler alert, so watch out and take care. It's gonna have lots of spoilers. The story starts with a man who is reading a bedtime story to his daughter, Maggie, along with his wife, Teresa. In that story, a red hood velvet is mentioned. The very same red hood appears outside their house immediately. But as he reads, this man is Silvertongue. A Silvertongue is someone who can summon things and characters from stories into the real world. Time passes and 12 years later, the Silvertongue and Maggie, who is now grown up, are going to some old bookshop to search for a book named Inkheart. Silvertongue goes looking for it and finds it, but when he comes back, he notices that a man is talking with Maggie, and his name is Dustfinger. He asks Silvertongue about the book and asks if he will read the book. Silvertongue denies, saying he won't read. Dustfinger blames him, saying he is here because of Silvertongue's committed mistake. He threatens him to read the book and send him back, otherwise Capricorn will make him read. Silvertongue asks him to leave him alone by pushing him down. Silvertongue runs away, taking Maggie along. He tells Maggie that we are just moving with your great aunt. Silvertongue used to do this, he never spent much time anywhere. He usually moves from place to place. It was their first time there when Dustfinger shows up. What an astonishing fact it is. How did he know that they were here? He says to Silvertongue, I had asked you to read about the book for me, but you didn't. I've made a deal with Capricorn by telling him your whereabouts. In return, he will send me back. Now you will repent because his men have come to seize you. Then some men of Capricorn take Silvertongue and Maggie to Capricorn at his castle. Capricorn threatens Silvertongue saying he would harm Maggie if he does not read Alibaba and 40 Thieves giving him the book. As Silvertongue begins to read, lots of treasure, gold coins, and costly things begin to fall from the upside. And Farid, a character from the book, also falls down along with other treasure. Meanwhile, one of Capricorn's men is sent to the book. Capricorn says, I'm here and I'm happy, and I'll spend the rest of my life using this treasure, and will never go back in the book even if I had the chance. And with that, he throws Silvertongue's Inkheart copy in the fire. He further reveals that he had already burned down all other Inkheart copies. Because he really did not want to go back, it makes Dustfinger feel betrayed, who says, You don't want to return, but I want. Send me back. You promised me. That's what Capricorn says. Capricorn locks Silvertongue and his daughter, taking them upstairs. Feeling betrayed, angry, and despair, Dustfinger goes to the kitchen where a lady is enslaved in chains. He asks her if, given a chance, would you be free? The lady was dumb, so she couldn't really answer, but she did with a gesture, and then she said that she would be more than happy. He further asks her where would she go, and she shows him a sketch of her husband and daughter. Dustfinger is astonished, and the lady is Silvertongue's lost wife. In prison, Silvertongue tells Maggie that he had power to bring things back and characters from stories by reading them. But whenever something comes from stories, someone from the real world goes inside the story. This is how Capricorn, his men, and Dustfinger got there. And that's how Teresa was lost. Silvertongue searched for that book in a hope of finding his wife. He used to think that she had gone inside the book. Dustfinger obviously overhears Silvertongue and asks, can we find the next Inkheart copy together? I want to go back. And you also want to bring Teresa back, don't you? Silvertongue says first they needed to escape this castle. Dustfinger hands him a copy of The Wizard of Oz and asks Silvertongue to read its page 40 where a tornado is mentioned. As Silvertongue begins to read out loud, the tornado comes out and destroys much of the castle, meanwhile letting them free. They escape the castle, but Teresa was still inside. She asks Dustfinger for help, but he does not help, nor he lets Silvertongue know about her presence. Dustfinger thought if Silvertongue knew she was there all this time, he would not have agreed to search for the book, nor would have tried to send Dustfinger back. They find the author of Inkheart. The writer gives them original manuscript of the book. Dustfinger gets excited getting the manuscript and asks Silvertongue to send him back. He says, first I will call Teresa from the book, then I will send you back. Dustfinger tells him that he would not be able to do that or nor call Teresa back because she was already back, enslaved in the castle, which they just escaped. Silvertongue obviously gets angry and asks Dustfinger, were you in your sense? Why did you not let me know? My wife is here. The argument heats up and begins to fight Dustfinger who tells Silvertongue to not beat him up because I love my family and the same as you love. Silvertongue leaves Maggie at the author's house. He and Dustfinger go back to the castle to free Teresa. Meanwhile, Maggie begins to read the book in which a cute little puppy is mentioned. Suddenly, the same dog comes out. She comes to a realization that she is also a Silvertongue. She was just reading the book when Capricorn's men find her and the author. Looking at the dog, they come to know that she is also a silver tongue. 
They take her and the author to the castle. The girl and the author both are locked up. They find out that Dustfinger is also caught and is locked up as well. Dustfinger manages to escape again and tells Silvertongue that Capricorn has captured Maggie. She has told me that Capricorn has another copy of Incart. Dustfinger lets Silvertongue know that Maggie has the same powers to bring characters out of the story. Capricorn is going to use her power to bring a monster called Shadow, made of ashes and fire, out of Incart. He will control that monster for his evil deeds. Back in the cellar, the writer gets an idea of changing the ending of the book, so when she will read it, everything will be restored back to normal. But before this could have happened, she was taken away. She is brought out to read the ink card and summon the monster. As she begins to read, the monster appears. That was one scary sight. The shadow was made out of ashes and fire. As mentioned, everyone is frightened except Capricorn, who is pleased to witness the shadow because the monster is obedient. The writer writes the ending on one single page and sends that page to Maggie. She begins to read and the shadow begins to feel pain of all those life it has taken and those who are inside it. Now it takes revenge against all the evil people. The shadow moves towards Capricorn. The shadow really begins to move forwards towards Capricorn, but then the page was snatched from her. Her father asks her to further read the ending, but she asks how could she? She does not have the page. He throws a pen at her saying then write a good one. She begins to write and read and the shadow when moves towards the Capricorn, the Capricorn turns into ashes. He in fact begins to turn into ashes as she reads the story. She further reads, all the characters from the books that I can see also return to their books and everything is restored. Well, that's the same thing that happens. Even her mother gets her voice back. The author makes her send him into his creation in card so that he could live his story and she does so. Meanwhile. When Dustfinger comes to witness everyone going back, he considers himself unfortunate as he missed the chance to go back inside the book. Disappointedly, he leaves, thinking that now when Silvertongue is reunited with his wife, there was no chance that he would send him back. But he was wrong. Just when he was leaving, the Silvertongue approaches him and sends him back. Silvertongue asks Ferret if he wants to go back, but he denies, saying he is more happy in the real world. The story ends here with this happy ending where everyone is happy. The story has many lessons such as the friendship is a real treasure to possess. As selfishness is the worst of things, moreover, it is always better to give more than to receive. So that was all. Give us a thumbs up and if you like this recap, whoa, 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 whoa. If you get a chance to bring out any character in the real world, who would it be? Let us know in the comment section below. We will be back with another amazing recap. Till then, stay tuned.